Hi, it's Tarrant. And Stella from Meeple University on the Dice Tower. Today we'll be teaching you how to play Transmissions, a game designed by Adam West and published by Crosscut Games. And let's not forget the artwork, Tarrant. Game features the cute robot art by Matt Dixon. We are using a prototype copy of the game, and so the rules and components may not be final. Let's get to the table. Transmissions is a rondel game set in the universe of Matt Dixon's childlike robots trying to come to terms with the world and emotions. Players will share these four robots, moving them around the board to gain engrams and electricity, and spend them on ideas, items or pipes. Players will use these to build up the powers and points of their robots as well as their pipe networks and at the end of the game, the player with the most points wins. To set up the game, split the square item tiles into four stacks, A, B, C and D, and the rectangular idea tiles into five, E, F, G, H and starting. You will use the starting idea tiles in every game. For the others, you'll use only as many stacks as you have players in the game. So, two stacks of items and two stacks of ideas if you're playing a two-player game. Shuffle the separate stacks of items and ideas together, but do not shuffle in the starting ideas. Now, place the main board in the centre of the table. Place the items and ideas near the town and scrapyard locations and deal the first four off the top of each stack into this area. Down in the pipe section of the board, you'll need to place stacks of pipe tiles. First, remove the four starting pipe tiles. You'll be able to tell these apart because they will be double-sided, unlike the in-game pipes, and will not have a cost or victory points printed on them. Shuffle up all of the pipe tiles and then create four stacks of face-up tiles. The number of tiles in each stack should be five in a two-player game, six in a three-player game, and seven in a four-player game. Any leftover tiles are put back in the box. In the forest location in the top right of the board, shuffle up all of the forest cards and then place them in a stack and flip one card face up to start the discard pile. Then place each of the four robot minis onto one of the 14 spaces on the main board. They can go anywhere as long as there are at least two empty spaces between each pair of robots. Now give each player a player board, a starting pipe tile, two random starting idea tiles, four electricity, and four engrams, one of each colour. These are placed onto these steps of the player's player board. Each player now looks at their starting idea tiles and places them somewhere onto their player board, either on separate robot columns or two on the same column. Finally, each player takes a deck of seven transmissions cards, showing the same picture on the back, shuffles them up and draws a starting hand of three. Choose a first player and you're now ready to play. Transmissions is played in turns, starting from the first player and going clockwise around the table. A turn takes place in the following steps. First, a player plays one card from hand and then moves the matching depicted robot around the board. The player may also resolve idea effects already played on their board for the matching robot. The player then completes the action at the location where the robot ended. The player will redraw to three cards and then play will pass to the next player clockwise. This continues until the end of the game is triggered, which can be by a stack of pipes running out, by items or ideas being unable to be refilled, or by a player completely filling their player board. After all other players have taken one last turn, the player with the highest score wins. So now let's look through each of these steps in detail. The first step of any turn is to choose a robot to move by choosing one card from hand and playing it face up. Your deck contains seven cards. Four of them show a specific robot, and by playing that card you will move that robot on the map. The other three show a combination of locations on the map, and by playing one of these cards you must move a robot who is currently on one of those two or three locations. The image shown on the card matches what the space looks like on the board. 
Having played a card and chosen a robot, you must now move that robot on the main map. The robot must move at least one space and may move up to the number of spaces shown either on the card or above that robot on your player board. Movement must be in a clockwise direction. A robot cannot share a space with another and when encountering one, skips over it as if it weren't there. This is therefore not counted in the total movement count. And so this movement would be one, two, three. The overall track follows a kidney shape around the board. If you have any idea tiles on the robot that you've chosen to move, then during your turn, you may resolve any or all of them in whichever order you wish. Some of these show a discrete action. This player, for example, when moving the blue robot, could spend two electricity to gain one blue engram. Some ideas will increase a robot's movement range or otherwise change its movement rules. And some will give an extra bonus when comboed with a specific action on the board. In this case, you would only get that bonus if the robot did that action. Next, you'll resolve the location action at the location where your robot landed. At the meadow, you'll gain either one green engram or two yellow engrams. At the lake, you'll gain a blue engram or two white engrams. In both cases, any engrams are placed onto the seven storage spaces at the top of your board. If you ever have above seven, you must discard down to seven at the end of your turn. At the power plant, you'll gain four electricity. There is no limit on the amount of electricity you can hold. At the forest, you will gain one forest card. First, draw two cards, which may come either from the top of the face down draw deck or off the discard pile. Look at them, choose the one you want to keep, and then place the other face up on the discard pile. Your forest cards are kept face up near your player board, and each of them represents a single once off special ability, which you can activate at any time on this turn or a subsequent turn. To activate one, flip it face down and then resolve its effect, and all of these are outlined in the rulebook. You will hold on to any forest cards you've played as they will still figure in final scoring. At the town, you may buy one of the four face-up items to add to one of your robots. Pay the item's cost, which is equal to the two engrams in the bottom corner, and the electricity cost printed under it. So here, a yellow, a white, and three electricity. Take the item tile and discard from the game the idea tile on the same column. Slide all remaining tiles to the right and refill from the top of the draw deck. Then place your newly purchased item into two slots on any one of your four robots. It does not need to be the robot you activated this round. Items have no effect within the game, but will score you victory points at the end. The scrapyard location can be used to purchase an idea tile, and it works in much the same way as the town. Choose from the face-up ideas and pay its cost, which is equal to its electricity cost, shown in the bottom corner, and for these two spaces, either a yellow or white engram. After making a purchase, you will take the idea tile from the space, discard the item in the same column from the game, slide all remaining items and ideas to the right, and refill from the draw decks. Then place your newly purchased idea tile into one empty slot on any one of your four robots. Again, it doesn't have to be the one you activated this turn. Some ideas are worth victory points, while others will give you an ongoing bonus when you move that particular robot. The final action is pipes, and here you can buy the top pipe segment from one of the four stacks. The cost will always be three engrams, as printed on the bottom left corner of the tile. Take the tile you've purchased and add it into your pipe network, rotating it in whichever way you wish. Pipes come in two sizes, either large or small, and will have either a male or female connection, which has to be locked together when you connect it. Pipes have no in-game effect, but will be worth victory points at the end of the game. If you ever buy a pipe segment which you cannot physically fit into your network, then flip it over and set it to the side. It will still score, but a lower number of points. 
Once you've finished your action, take the card that you used to activate a robot this turn and place it on the bottom of your draw deck. Then draw back up to three cards in hand off the top. You will never shuffle your draw deck, which means that you will slowly cycle through it and you won't see the same robot cards over and over. This reduces the potential benefit of loading one of your robots up with ideas and the others with items. Play then passes to the next player clockwise. There are three ways to trigger the end of the game. This will occur if somebody purchases an item or idea and there are no longer any left in the draw deck to refill. If the last tile is purchased from any one of the four pipe stacks. Or if any player fills every slot on their player board. Each other player gets one more turn and then proceed to final scoring. There are five different ways to score. First score robots. Any robot which is completely filled in its column scores the points at the top of its column. Secondly, score ideas and items. Each idea or item will show its number of points in its top left corner. Where there are multiple numbers, this is a compounding effect for having more than one of the same type of item. Here for example, one sock would be worth one point. Two socks would be worth five points each for a total of ten, and three socks would be worth eight each for twenty-four. Similarly, one oven mitt is worth only two, and one balloon is worth nothing. Next you'll score for your pipes. Each pipe tile has a raw number of points printed in its light bulb, including the ones you do not place in your network, which are worth four. Additionally, you'll score for your longest run of pipe tiles. To determine the length, start from but do not include your starting pipe tile, and then continue moving away from there. So here the count would be one, two, three, four, and then five in one of these two. This pipe, which goes off in the opposite direction, doesn't count to the sequence. You'll then score points based on this table. Next, you'll score birds and butterflies. If you look closely, you'll see birds and butterflies on some of your items, ideas and pipe tiles. Count up all your butterflies, here it's six, and all your birds, here it's five. Multiply those together and gain those points, so here, 30 points. Finally, you'll score forest cards. Players flip face up any forest cards they've played or not played, and then count up the total number of acorns at the bottoms of those cards. Here it's six. Each player gains one point for each two acorns, and then the player who has the fewest acorns, as long as they have at least one, scores five bonus points. In the event of a tie, all eligible players get the five points. The player with the highest score wins, and in the event of a tie, whoever has the fewest acorns wins. And that's how to play Transmissions. We hope you enjoyed this video. When we film this video, Transmissions is going to Kickstarter, so we will put the link in the description below when it is live, so you can check it out. If you find this video useful, please help us by hitting that like button and subscribe to the Dice Tower if you haven't already done so. And if you have any questions, comments or feedback, please leave them in the comment section below. See you next time!